Harbor, Hillsborough County, UF IFAS Extension in Sefter, Florida. We're here today to talk about rain gardens. Well, we've certainly been getting our share of rain lately, haven't we, in Central Florida? Yes, well, a rain garden is an ideal way to do something beautiful with rain. So this is an example of a rain garden that we have in our courtyard garden. And you can see that we have ferns and we have carnivorous plants in this garden, in addition to a beautiful accent piece, which is this gorgeous piece of driftwood. So let me tell you a little bit about creating a rain garden. And we do have a rain garden manual if you'd like to stop by the extension office and pick up your own personal copy. The very first thing you need to do before you start planning to dig your rain garden is to make sure that you make that phone call to 811 to make sure that they come out and mark any underground utilities prior to your digging. Then the next thing that you can do is determine and the layout for your rain garden. You can make it any size that you want and any shape that you want. So once you have that idea, then what you can do is you need to have one end, the end that drains the most quickly, to be your lower end. And then the other end will be your upper end. And so you can dig out your area and you wanna be sure that you're digging a minimum of four inches to about 18 inches. We dug a good 18 inches for our rain garden at the extension office. We have a perforated pipe that is attached to the cistern underground on the higher end so that when the water drains, it will wet the upper end of the pond and then the water flows to the lower end where it drains out. And now what we're gonna do, we're going to add materials. We dug down about six inches, four to six inches, and we only added sphagnum moss to the top. Now the deal with sphagnum moss is you need to wear gloves when you're handling sphagnum moss and you need to soak it in water and then you top dress around the plants once they're planted, or you top dress the entire area and then you plant the plants if you're starting from scratch. The reason that you want to have gloves on when you're dealing with sphagnum moss is because sphagnum does have a fungi in it which can cause a disease if you have abrasions or scratches on your hands. So it's always better to be safe than sorry. So wear gloves. For plant selection, we have a plant list as part of the rain garden manual and we can give you additional plants. And we have many of these plants that are in this garden and in other parts of our garden. One thing that is beautiful in a rain garden is a swamp hibiscus. The flowers on the swamp hibiscus are as large as my hand and occasionally as large as my face. And they are magnificent and red, they're gorgeous. A cinnamon fern, it likes a lot of moisture. It's a native, it's a perennial, it has a slow growth rate and it reaches a mature height and spread of four feet by four feet. Another great plant is the shrimp plant. It too loves moisture and it attracts butterflies and hummingbirds. It's not a native, it's a perennial, fast growing, and its mature height and spread is three feet by three feet. Muley grass, another of my favorites, is a native, it's a perennial, it is a medium fast grower, and the mature height and spread is five feet by three feet. Canna lilies attract wildlife also. Some canna lilies are natives. They are perennials, they have a fast growth rate, and they reach a height of six feet and a spread of three. African iris is another great plant for a rain garden. It's not a perennial and it doesn't attract wildlife. It has a slow growth rate. It has gorgeous flowers and reaches a mature height of three feet and spread of two. A rain garden is a wonderful addition to any landscape. We are always here to help. Please stop by and see our rain garden. We hope to see you soon.